Far Pesu is definitely one of those few monsters that deserves a return here. Now, this Leviathan is from Monster Hunter Frontier. Go figure, right? Because I do like to do the Frontier monsters as they are really not talked about as much here. And believe it or not, his elements are both fire and thunder, which he can also inflict paralysis and stun. But the funny thing is, right, he's also weak to fire. <laughs> but it's actually pretty interesting how... This creature is in general, you know. Quarpesu, as children, as infants, actually spend a large majority of their life in the ocean until they're more so teenagers or adults to where they come on, on land and, well, live out their lives on land developing that crystal hide. Which means that they may start off as regular leviathans or regular sea-dwelling creatures until they reach a certain age to where their lungs develop to where they can actually be the land but believe it or not here this creature may actually be somewhat elder dragon level or close to it because it does have interactions with the likes of Beriki or Beri Caruso and Doragi Russo which are both of the same species of these specific flying wyverns that actually will go out of their way to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and physically fight against Rajang. These guys are also noted to be the Rajangs of flying wyverns, meaning that it's not Basil Goose who's got that black Air Force energy because he's a B-52 bomber, yet you got these guys, these kamikaze lightning missiles over here that will straight up go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any creature and using their electrical capabilities in order to take them down. Same with Rajang. And they actually will go ahead and fight an elder dragon only being outdone by a certain flying wyvern i will be making a video for both of these guys around wave eight as they'll be a part of the dinosaur and wyvern section which i will be going back to and you know bringing it back here kind of wanted to get away from it for this way but again you know with me still doing ecology videos and stuff like that there for underrated monsters that do need love and attention yeah um we're gonna do it <laughs> so the sheer fact that quarpressu here our crystal leviathan is able to not only endure attacks from these guys but is able to like go toe to toe and definitely fend them off in my opinion definitely cements him as a very powerful wyvern now what does quarpressu eat to actually get these kind of interactions well it'll eat cephalodromes and gen prey as common prey here It'll also eat Apsorosis and likely Aptanoth as well if they are in the area. Also, Kestodons and... Um, what's the other one? Uh, I'm trying to think. Kelby. Sorry. Kelby. That's what I'm thinking of as well. And with Alti Grand Prey, they'll also be getting drones as well. But it's very possible it will eat any other monster that it comes across. Because again, monsters really don't waste too many resources unless they're like anti-cannibalistic which most of the monsters are, minus like Devil Joe and I believe Astalos as well, because Astalos are known to like eat younger members of the species that can like fit in their mouths here. Plus, we also know that Quarpesu is able to go toe to toe and hold its own against a Espinas species, which have been consistently known, whether it's rare species, subspecies, or variants of the species again <laughs> espinas is considered an elder dragon level monster no matter what i mean we've seen its interactions with teostra we see we probably know it would definitely interact with a lunastra maybe it would lose maybe it would win you never know that's the thing with these elder dragon level monsters they always have a 50 50 chance against these elder dragons they have a percentage that they can win against or a certain few they can win against because of their um which am i call it their uh their ailments or their damage dealing abilities and stuff like that there and if they can exploit the weakness of an elder dragon unlike nerigagante who uses uh just pure boot physical strength because he's him right so with that being said here quarpesu's main rivalry actually comes from the Tide Islands, or the Highlands, excuse me, <laughs> wrong place. These are the Highlands, an area where water, where it's like raining constantly, and it sometimes does have some dry days, but this is where it actually gets into fights with Gurren Bozu. Now, Gurren Bozu here is a flying wyvern, which, believe it or not, is very surprising. 
and they have both been recorded by the guilds there to actually be one of the more main competitors or one of the main um rivalries in the monster hunter franchise when at least when it comes to this region their main competitions with, is with each other is what i'm saying here so that leaves them with these kind of interactions on a daily basis because keep in mind they don't really interact or overlap with each other anywhere else here meaning that they are competing for the same prey or for territorial disputes here hunting grounds maybe you know mating you know mating grounds as well or mating opportunities with their respective species and then obviously you know one predator gets in a way that could actually be a threat to the other and it is what it is here so <laughs> these creatures just have so many different ways to interact with each other and so many ways to flat out overcome each other in all honesty but it's actually quite interesting because at first i thought it was a piscine wyvern relationship between the two however we do know that gorzin gorin bozu is weak to thunder meaning that again our uh, crystal leviathan over here does have the edge now this is actually pretty important here because how does it manipulate this thunder and fire capability, right? And this would have to be because of its crystals. Now, here's the funny thing, and this is what I think that Monster Hunter Wilds needs to do, okay? So what it needs to do is definitely have creatures that can use their elements based on the weather, but have us hunt them like, like at the beginning of the day and then as everything kind of like goes on and picks up during the battle, we start to see storm clouds form. We start to see the environment actually change around us to try and benefit that same exact monster. Okay? Because Quarpesu, <clears throat> excuse me, Quarpesu here is able to manipulate light, turn it into energy, and use it to expel this energy beam, which would basically give the um monster hunter more uh, solid evidence for being a ftl character so yeah you got that there so what you actually have here is the sheer fact that quarpesu is able to absorb the solar rays or absorb the electromagnetic energy or maybe absorb light itself it's one of these three things that allow quarpesu to actually be able to draw in the energy of the sun itself when it's daytime and actually expel that beam of light so it's very possible that he is absorbing sunlight rather than electromagnetic energy however at nighttime it's definitely absorbing the electromagnetic energy of the storms of the storm currents itself here likely drawing in any electricity to it kind of like a magnet if you will and this would allow Quarpesu to expel electricity from its body as the crystals have already absorbed it and even laying crystals down on the ground here and if he's around them this would also help him draw in that energy and then pour it into him so this creature definitely has a lot of advantages going for itself depending on the i guess you could say depending on the environment itself here it is found in desert so that means it may actually be using its sunlight capabilities a lot more than his electrical capabilities within the highlands and again i think this creature would be perfect for like a wetlands or stuff like that there because you can have storms in wetlands and stuff here and have this creature just use its electricity to cause trouble to the hunter and then during daytime it could use its light reflective ability to again cause trouble to the hunter and definitely inflict either fire or thunder blight or its paralysis or whatever and i do think monster hunter frontier or monster hunter wilds i should say is going to be the new monster hunter frontier these monsters look weird these monsters look crazy and they look amazing at the same time the same way monster hunter frontier did their monsters it seems like they're kind of picking up some of the formula here by the way y'all ever notice how these like leviathans here have like a dalmador-esque spike wave or spike um pattern interesting i actually do wonder if dalmador is going to be in the game that would actually be um pretty crazy here but it looks like we just got the desert and maybe a swampland-like environment for right now. 
So until we get something like Forest, I know we are going to probably have a Tundra sometime in the future. But for right now, it is what it is. Quarpesu is definitely perfect for Monster Hunter Wild here, as it's a creature that benefits both in Swamplands and in, well, desert regions. Imagine him being able to absorb the um, sunlight, right? And then blast it at you. But then if it like rains, you kind of get a break from that and now have to deal with its electricity. I think that would be interesting for monsters to actually be able to like fight depending on their environment so that hunters could actually get used to it. And then obviously OG players like myself and a few others would definitely be able to exploit that as well. Like as soon as that stops and they begin to change here, this means that you have an actual opportunity to go for it. But overall, that's going to wrap up the Quarpesu um, ecology. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share with your friends. And I'll see you guys later for the next video. Peace.